Hello and welcome to Siren FM, Lincoln's first community radio station. Here at the Cyber Den, your weekly dose of tech and games, I, Jake, will be chatting with BAFTA award-winning composer James Hannigan. Thanks for coming, mate. It's a pleasure. Now, James, you've composed soundtracks for various Harry Potter, Warhammer and Command & Conquer games. Please tell us what got you into composing soundtracks. Initially, I had sort of planned to enter into the film and TV industry. I mean, that was my initial goal. And this was in my early 20s when I was sort of looking for work. as a, I mean, as a composer, there aren't really many outlets for music. And uh, my passion had always been film music. And games were interesting to me. And I grew up playing games. So I did have a fascination with the medium. But um, one day I decided to send off a bunch of demo tapes. And some of those got picked up by games companies. And they showed an interest in what I was doing and before I knew it I had an offer uh, to work in-house at Electronic Arts and I was asked to become in-house composer at the uh, EA UK and I just took the opportunity and went from there really so that was my that was how I got involved in games at least I continued doing other things on the side and bits of TV some other freelance work and what have you but um, that's how I cut my teeth in games and I stayed there for a couple of years before going back to freelance work because I, I, I didn't really feel it was the right kind of environment for me. But it was a good experience and I learned about the whole process of how you compose for games and other uh, media forms, that kind of thing. So it was a really good grounding and I, I, you know, I don't regret it at all. Compared to the early days of your career, which you started around the 1990s, how has video game composing changed over the years for you? Funnily enough, for me, it hasn't changed that dramatically, and the reason for that is because I joined the industry when a certain change was taking place in the way that music was getting delivered in games that hasn't really changed very much since. Uh, before, you know, sort of before the mid 90s, there was, you know, it was a very specialised area to work in. You had chip music and a lot of MIDI based music. I mean, I did a little bit of that in the early days, but on the whole, that kind of music, the sort of music that you'd hear you know, in a Commodore 64 game or a Amiga, that kind of thing, was just sort of fading away a little bit in the mainstream. And what was coming in at that time was digital audio, so digital playback of music, something that resembled uh, recorded music that you'd hear in any other context. So it could be exactly the same process, basically, of recording uh, as, you, as you would use to record a piece of film or TV music. But what has changed considerably, I think, is the delivery quality. Because uh, in those days, even if you record this fantastic music, in the studio, it ended up being sort of mangled before it found its way into the game anyway, because it had to be compressed, like a little bit like MP3 today. MP3 is of a much higher quality, but in those days, a sort of earlier versions of MP3, you could say, and they were very kind of grainy, and they added all these artifacts and all this noise into the background that almost kind of defeated the object of recording music at all. But it was still essentially the same process so you'd you'd compose uh, music in a pretty conventional studio setting and then record it like you would anything else basically Uh, but the difference is in terms of the actual approach to composition uh, I think that could be quite interesting been a lot of technological innovation that's enabled composers to play their music back interactively so um but also that that's had a kind of effect on the, the way that composers actually write the music as well there are so many possibilities but essentially games force you to think about music in a slightly or well, a very different way really um, because anything can happen in the game and in order to reflect that the music has to be flexible enough to adapt
where is it that you get your inspiration from when you compose? Are there any particular composers or musicians out there who have inspired your choices? My great greatest passion, if you like, was film music. So I'm very, very heavily influenced by composers like Bernard Herrmann, Miklos Rosa, and John Williams, Jerry Goldsmith, and The Usual Suspects. So, as you probably have noticed, games have become more and more filmic as time has gone on. They've become, I don't want to use the word cinematic because it's overused quite a lot, but the way that stories are told in games and the visual language and the musical language that's employed is very, very much borrowed from film. So that kind of suits me quite well, really. So my early, earliest influences and ongoing influences, I guess, are classical music in general, more serious music, but also film music. I mean, I do like games music, but I think if, you know, when it comes to the game music that I would draw on, I think, well, actually, I think I'd probably draw on film music for my own composition, but I, and my own style, I hope I have my own voice, but um, I wouldn't say that I'm not influenced by uh, games music. I mean, there is a kind of game sound that uh, fascinates me and it is distinct. So a whole variety of, um, I mean, it's, it's really, what you do is you, 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 you have to work to a brief and you have to write whatever it is that's stylistically appropriate for the project you're working on. It isn't all about what you like. I mean, what you try to do is you just find an appropriate sound and you work within that framework and you hope to kind of put your own stamp on it. But to some extent, you, you aren't fully in control of the direction of mu the music you work on anyway. So, um, it's a difficult question to answer, basically, in full. You're going to be taking part in the Game Music Connect 2014 conference, which you have co-founded. What is it about, and what can people expect from it? This is something that I created with John Broomhall, who's uh, another composer working in the games industry, and uh, he's also a, an industry commentator and writer for Develop. And he's a good friend, and we've worked together for a long time, and we felt that there was space for an event that catered to composers who were A, maybe already working in games, and B, just simply have an interest in working in games and don't know how to go about doing it. So, I mean, a lot of the existing events uh, in the games industry, I feel are a little bit geeky, if I'm entirely honest. I mean, very kind of technology-based. Uh, a lot of these big shows, games industry events, they feel as if they're kind of, to me, whenever I've been to um, sort of games music events in general, there's been a sense that they're sort of preaching to the converted and they're just sort of talking to people who already work in the industry, already understand it, and talking a lot about technology, you know, like the kind of interactive music technology I talked about earlier, or the sort of stemmed music and various approaches to that. But they very little in the way of aesthetics and the meaning of music in games. So really, it's, it's, we, we wanted to create an event that centers on the art of creating music for games and uh, talking about individual approaches that composers take to their music, their ex personal experiences working on very big titles, and um, the, just the general kind of emotional content of their music, which generally kind of gets overlooked, I think. So it's very much about that. And it's, uh, there's also a practical side to it as well. I mean, we talk about um, what uh, audio directors and developers are looking for in composers and the contractual side of things and how to promote yourself, uh, all kinds of things. So really, it's for aspiring composers but of any industry, of any background, and uh, composers who already work in games, anyone with an interest in games music, basically.
on a personal note, what are your favourite soundtracks in video games? Um, what soundtracks that you have composed personally would you consider are your favourites? I mean, I like very kind of gamey music if I'm playing a game. I mean, I like Mario games and Nintendo in general because they're so identifiable. They're so, you know, they have a sonic identity that is absolutely unmistakable and you know it's games music straight away when you hear the Mario theme, you know what it is. But with a lot of uh, this kind of filmic uh, games music, I, I don't think it really has that sort of identity. So I'm probably, I wouldn't say I'm most influenced by uh, things like Mario, but uh, that's what I like when I'm playing a game. I find it fun and completely unique. I mean, as far as projects that I've enjoyed working on, I mean, so many... Uh, from well, I suppose the my best work is probably in the Harry Potter games. I mean, from a purely musical point of view, from the point of view of music working very well in context, I think my music for games like Freelancer, Microsoft uh, Space game, I think that worked very well in context and was very well implemented and integrated into the game. So uh, that counts for a lot. I mean, you know, it's funny that there's this phenomenon in games music, I mean, the way that people appreciate it, some people just listen to it in isolation and that's how they appreciate it. It's just a nice piece of music. I mean, Final Fantasy, I think, is a good example of that. But other people think that good games music is music that works in context. It's almost music that you don't notice because it's so well integrated in the game. And so another game that um, worked quite well on that level, interactive music level, was Republic the Revolution, which was a political simulation I worked on around 2002 that had a very, very sophisticated interactive music system that was written especially for the game, and it was a long time before any kind of proprietary system existed um, for doing that, so I was quite proud of that. Individual tracks, I mean, I like, well, I'm quite proud of my themes for Evil Genius, uh, the Soviet March from Command & Conquer Red Alert 3. It's quite fun, and I had a lot of fun writing that. There are so many, I mean, but probably those are the ones that stand out as being um, my favourites, I guess. James, thank you very much for this interview. Uh, it was a pleasure. And of course, I'd also like to thank my dear listeners out there once again for tuning into the Cyberden, your weekly dose of tech and games, right here on Siren FM 107.3. See you later, James, and good luck with the Game Music Connect conference. Thank you, and uh, thank you for having me. <laughs>